Hello and welcome to this quick look at uh, one of the new features in Worldographer. I'm the creator of the program, Joe Wetzel, and uh, this new feature that we're going to go over is our Fog of War exploration functionality. We've got a new drawer for it over here, as well as there's a matching toolbox, which is kind of a floating dialogue version of these drawers. If you're using toolboxes, you can um, get the same functionality from that floating dialogue, which is the Fog of War exploration dialogue up here. This button will do it for you. Um, what you see in front of you is an, basically an auto-generated map uh, where we've mu been mucking around a little bit with the terrain just to uh, match up the rivers. Worldographer will automatically generate a map for you and then you can go up to the generate menu and have it create coasts, rivers, and nations and empires, place them on, onto the map for you. However, if you have something specific in mind, you can also create your entire map from scratch. Um, so like. I was uh, just a moment ago tweaking the terrain. Oops, so let me go into classic here. This is our uh, classic TSR 80s style icon set um, that Worldographer specializes in, but we also have a civilization icon set, and you can also make World of Greyhawk style maps. Um, but it's just as easy as that. You just click the terrain type you want and click where you want it to be. You can also click and drag to more quickly place a bunch of terrain. We've got features, which is kind of the same idea for your different cities and your different um, different points of interest, um, pyramids and ruins and so forth. And so I can put down this pyramid um, over here in these hills, and I can also select it, and we can get notes for it. So uh, the tool worldographer creates a bunch of information about your world as well, and so when you click notes of selected, it will auto generate some information for many of those feature types. Not all, but many. Likewise, there's a bunch of data generated for your world which you can totally rewrite or ignore, such as uh, cultures and religions and nations for your world. Um, and then you also have shapes. The other main part of the program here is shapes and all of your borders for your countries and your coastlines and your rivers are polygons and lines of different types. And you can you can select them and tweak them, move them around and change the, the um, uh, colors and so forth with all that functionality and like I should said point out that there's labels as well um, but the main point of this video is our fog of war functionality which was um, voted on by our backers on patreon patreon.com slash inkwell ideas as something that they wanted to see in addition to a couple of other features and this is the one that um, we just felt most passionate about um, especially with uh, coronavirus and isolation with more and more people using um, uh, sc screen sharing apps and virtual tabletops to play. If you're using a screen sharing app, um, using sharing your screen of Worldographer is a great way to play D&D uh, &D and role playing games because you know the tools are all there to make it easy for you to create maps and to move tokens too. In fact, that's the other part of this this uh, release, which is version one point one eight that has this functionality in it. Um, but it also has a number of new tokens as well, which we'll get to in a moment. So this new functionality um, is, is in this uh, drawer right here. Um, but before I get to that, one other thing to point out is that there was some fog of war type functionality uh, in the program before, and that's called GM only, where I can right click on terrain and I can say select all or set all the terrain to GM only except whichever one I picked. And then I can toggle it for as I go about as the players would move about the map, which works pretty well if you're doing kind of an exploration kind of game where the players are going one at a time. But it doesn't work very well if you're trying to reveal a large amount of terrain at the same time. Let me set that back. So um, with all that out of the way, the new functionality, the Fog of War functionality, you would typically start by hitting Select Area because you're going to, to want to, to tell it what area um, to, uh, make, uh, to, to keep revealed. Um, bef you would do this as the GM before you're starting to share your screen with the player so they don't see the rest of the map. And I can select an area in two ways. I can either click and drag for a rectangle or I can uh, click points, which will allow me to do a rectangle or other polygon shapes. So I can then click a number of points. And once I uh, click a few times here, 
you'll start to see the shape appear. So you get a little yellow um, background to things and um, that shows um, what area I want to show to the players. Let's say that they're starting out in this capital city and we want to reveal the surrounding countryside to the players. So I've now marked this area. Now every hexagon that is touching this, even if it's only slightly touching this uh, selected area, is going to be uh, is going to count for this show selected or hide everything but selected functionality. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say hide all but the selected area. So there we go. Um, and then as we go about, as the players uh, go and explore the, 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 the surrounding area, um, we can hit, hit select area again. And I can then this time click this area here, show selected, and this appears. Now, if I've gone too far, if I revealed too much, I can you know, uh, create another um, polygon and I can hide that. The other way I can do, do things is uh, if I want to avoid revealing too much, I can turn off my screen sharing temporarily and then I can temporarily show all and then I can pick the area that I want to show once I know exactly what it is. Um, and then I can show selected. And then when I, you know, when I make changes, once I uh, toggle this back, um, those changes still apply. And all this functionality is, is covered or is described in this instructions dialogue here by the question mark button there. Now, what I should point out also is that Worldographer uh, is hex based for the world and kingdom maps, like what you're seeing here, as well as for our city settlement uh, town village maps. Those are all hex based. So although you can put on a square grid, uh, you can replace that, that hex grid with a square grid, there's still hex based behind the scenes. So this whole uh, functionality selecting an area is still going to reveal hexes. So you kind of have a, a little bit of an oddity there where um, you, you'd be showing um, uh, uh, the hexes that are hex like objects that don't match up with your square grid. Um, on the other hand, your battle maps are actually square based um, in Worldographer behind the scenes. And usually you have a square grid, but sometimes you might have the hex grid and um, likewise. So you'll see, and we're, we're actually going to go there now is to create a battle map. Um, so we're going to just create a quick little battle map of a tavern and generate the map. And let me zoom out. Now, one of the things that you can do is um, we can add like a texture so we, we don't have this gray block here. So I can go into shapes, for example, and I can create a polygon. I can make my polygon a yeah, forest floor uh, texture. If I cut this and then I push it down to the bottom so it's underneath the other polygons that make up the floor here. And um, that's what um, that's how that works. So moving into the fog of war functionality, same thing. Um, so I would do all that before the players uh, start to see my screen. I would go to select area and say they um, go, they create that area, hide all but the selected, and then the players can see this area. Um, now, as we go about our business and they get into some trouble and they start looking for the back way out through the back door, then I can turn off my screen sharing, for example, because I don't know exactly how big the kitchen is. And then I go ahead and reveal it. And then I select it. And I know that there's this. And so then I show that selected, turn that off, make sure that looks right. Then I would turn back on the screen sharing and then the players can um, get in there. As I said, though, we also added a number of tokens to the tool. Previously, we had maybe up to 30 tokens. We've increased that to 90. Uh, specifically for players and monsters, there's actually hundreds, if not a thousand or more than a thousand different graphic objects in the, in the tool. Um, but you've got all these different um, uh, pictures now of PCs or NPCs and creatures. And so we can put our party down. So say if we have this person, um, they're here. 
and um, got this one here and we've got this one here at the bar there and then we've got on the other side of the bar or maybe sitting where we have we have a couple of So we grab a couple of orcs, so a bunch of orcs storm in the door out here. It's, yeah. So we get a bunch of orcs coming in the door. And if you want to move all these around, you can do that pretty easily. You just hit select on the features drawer. That's where we are right here. And then you can click a feature and you can move them around. It's a little bit jaggedy there because place freely was not on when we placed it but now that now they'll move easily and i can select a different one now and then i can move this one again place freely if i want to differentiate because between you know orc one two three and four i also have the ability to add in labels so i can give this one the label one then i can select this guy here and give him the label two and select the next one and give him label three and label four. And then I can also do the same thing for the other characters where I can give them their names and put them on labels as well. So, and move them around as, as you know, you're having your combat. Um, so that covers the functionality that we've got that's new in Worldographer as of version 1.18. I hope that'll be really useful for your games. Uh, like I said, now there's upwards, there's 90 tokens, I believe, of all kinds of different monsters. Uh, you may not have everything, but, you know, if you want to have, say, there's an Etten, well, we don't have the Etten, but, you know, we've got a, a few different giants that you can choose from. So we've got all that there. The Fog of War functionality, like I said, is here. The instructions dialog goes over this as well. And I think that covers all this functionality. So, as I said... I hope this makes, uh, helps you make some great maps and helps you play your games online with any screen sharing application. Thank you.